church say amen. 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 Good evening, Rock Church. My brothers and sisters on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson, and we are in the house of the Rock of Our Salvation Church right here, right now, giving God praise. Come on, y'all. Give him another hand praise for our worship this evening. This evening, this evening. Listen, y'all, I want to invite you all to come in on on Wednesday nights, our Bible studies. We have them here. We start our time here on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock for prayer. It's corporate prayer. You need to come on in to be praying for your people. Pray for yourself. Pray for your community. Pray for your pastor. Come on, somebody. Then after that, at 7 o'clock, we have our praise and worship. I appreciate so much of Minister uh, Sheila today. She's given us a great time of praise and focus. I just want to share some of the couple of songs that we shared tonight. And uh, maybe you can look them up if you like on YouTube. Let your power fall. Yeah, let your power fall. Now, you remember Sunday morning we were talking about what? He has risen. He has risen indeed. It was Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. And I, like I said, Sunday, a lot of people are going to forget about it. Today, Wednesday. Today, Wednesday. How many people still talking about the resurrection? Yeah, yeah. See, see, that's the thing. Let, let your power fall. We want that power to keep falling on us. The other song we, we sung tonight, You Are Good. Come on, somebody. My God, my God. Isn't he not good? Who woke you all up this morning? Your alarm clock? Maybe the telephone? Maybe your children? Who woke y'all up this morning? Jesus woke us up this morning. Jesus woke y'all up this morning. Come on, somebody. And the other song we worship, man, that title was To Worship You, I Live. I live to worship you. Come on, somebody. Do you live to worship him? You know, we talked about these hands Sunday. What these hands were capable of doing. Jesus was nailed on a cross for us. I know a lot of times we're so busy. Things are happening in our lives. We get to going. We get to checking off some of the to-do to -do, to -do lists. Like today, I had a honey-do list. Honey, do this and honey, do this. It's a honey-do list, but you know what? Even in that, I was giving God praise Amen. to be able to have strength to be able to do some of them honey-do lists. So to worship him, we should live to live to worship him. And lastly, man, we, we, last, we, we finished our song. We talked about we are champions. Come on, somebody. Come on, give him a high praise, hand praise if you're a real champion. That's right. If you're a real champion, and you know what? Use your hands to give him praise. We are champions. Look, let me encourage you all to come in on a Wednesday night. Come on, get you some worship in. You're sitting there and getting that word. You ought to get some worship in. You better say, Pastor Rob, I'm tired. Or Pastor Rob, you don't know it was 80 degrees today. I know it was 80 degrees today. Come on, somebody. But come on, give him some space. Give him some of your time. Show up in person. I thank God for my brothers and sisters who came out tonight. Thank you all for coming in person, getting his word. That being said, we're going to pray. We're going to get right into the word of God. Father God, we thank you for an opportunity again to give you praise. We thank you for to be in the house one more time, God. Mm, let your power fall upon us as you have given the scriptures. We know you're good in all that you do. God, I pray as we study this word tonight, God, we come to a deeper conviction to worship you because you have made us champions because the blood of Jesus. May you be glorified. God, I pray that somebody may be listening not either tonight, tomorrow, or the days to come, and to make some true decisions about repentance, restoration. God, I pray that maybe someone say, what must I do to be saved? God, allow the message of salvation to ring in their hearts. And may they take heed to your invitation. Yeah, thank you. Holy Spirit, come on in. Be the teacher. Come on in. Oh, order our steps, our stops. Give us convictions. Give us, equip us tonight. Yes, that we may go forth as champions. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen. 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 Well, it's good to have you all here. Uh, I want to kind of piggyback on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. I want us to forget about that. I want us to keep that on our hearts and our minds to know that, man, he has risen. 
and he has risen indeed, and he's right now interceding for each and every one of us. He is sitting at the right hand of God. He's talking about you, Ruth, tonight. He said, Ruth came in in service. Her long day she have had today, she has served her, 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 her grandkids, and now she's at church. He's talking about you, Brother Donald, right now. All the stuff y'all had, had to do today, he's talking about y'all right now, Sister Sharita. I thank God he get to talk about you, Minister Doug. Amen. He's talking about you all right now that's watching me right now on live streaming. He's talking about you right now. In fact, tomorrow, if he, if he don't delay his coming, when you open up your eyes, you start giving God praise. He's talking about you. He's telling his father, look at my son. Look at, look at, look at your son down there. Look at your daughter down there giving you praise. He's talking about you. How so, Pastor Rob? Why is that even, how is that even possible? Because you have been declared justified. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk about the title of today's message. We have been declared justified. That's why he can talk about us. My God, I thank you. In fact, let me just tell you what that means. See, to be declared is to be announced. To bring into the open. Come on, somebody. He's telling, he's telling the Father all about you, all about your prayers and your concerns. The things you say, the things that's on your heart. My God, I thank God I'm declared. And to be justified is to declare or make righteous in the sight of God. That's why he can bring you, Minister, Steve, Minister Sheila, right there in God's presence. Because what he's done. My God, my God, that was made possible all by the resurrection, brothers and sisters. But we can't forget that. We can't forget that the resurrection is very important. But the death is just equally as important. Let us be reminded because he had to die for us individually, but yet collectively. And I thank God that he did that so that we could be declared and made righteous in the sight of God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some justification has happened for each and every one of us. And justification means to what? To put right with. To put right with. I, I need to be put right. I, because I'm wrong. I need stuff to be made right. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did that. He did that, and he did that. He did that with a struggle, though. No, 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 no. It wasn't easy. Remember the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm not talking about this as something that was easy to do. Now, it was a process. Father, <laughs> it got to be another way. Is there another way I can save Rob Stevenson? Got to be another way I can save Elder Reggie. There ain't no other way, Sister Tanya. There ain't no other way. It's only one way. And because he chose that, that struggle in that time in his life has put us right with God. Amen. And because of that, I want to remind us, you don't have to wait till next year, Resurrection Sunday, to keep walking in the power of the resurrection. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm going to give you three points tonight to help us to understand the benefit of Christ's resurrection power. Number one, come on, y'all. We're going to get this down. It comes from Jesus' word. Yeah, that power, this resurrection comes from his word. The word of God. This power, this power, this, you can't forget when you, when you, when you, when you are uh, uh, going through some things and you're, he says, man, I, I don't feel close to Jesus like I did Resurrection Sunday. Well, guess what? You want to get close to him? Open up Jesus, the word. You open it up. You're right there. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Come on, somebody. You cannot forget that Jesus is present. You know? And, and, and I tell people all the time, man, you cannot afford not to read your Bible. Amen. 
It's, just, it's almost like, man, you, 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 you got anything else to preach new, Pastor Rob? You got another revelation? You got something deep? This is deep as I can get. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Open it up. And when you open it up, you do what it says. Because it's power. And when I get to open it up, I, he gets to speaking to me. And, and he wants us to know something that's so important in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, and we also thank God continually because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but as it actually is the word of God which is indeed at work in you who believe. Come on, somebody. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So it is this power is on you if you open it up. You started by believing. Amen. And because you believe, come on, somebody, all you got to do is remember to put it in action. You can't believe one state of being what, what, brought into saving grace and not the other by applying the rest of it. Because it's, it wants to be at work in us. Ain't that something? And let me, let me just say this. Each and every one of you all, whoever worked a job, you went on the interview to get the job, and then after you pass and they says, hey, you're hired, now it's time to understand policies and procedures. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got to understand, you got to understand how we operate here. And as long as you are operating within the guidelines of these policies and procedures, watch this, you always have a job. Now, in that policy and procedure, in that policy, they also have some things that will happen if you need to be disciplined. Come on, somebody. Now, you said yes to everything until something all, something happened and it's time for your discipline. Now, you got a bad boss, this job. You, God, why you give me this job? I don't like this job. You know, we start complaining. You only complaining because you stop applying the policies and procedures. That habit and those behaviors also translate in everything we do in life. If we just do what we know to do, then we will be okay. In order for the word to work in you, you got to apply it. You got to do what it says. The policies and procedures are already written right here. Come on, somebody. You receive this. This, is, this ain't got nothing to do with a human being preaching to you. It has everything to do with who the, who the word is. It's God. The resurrection. But here's the deal. You got to also know anything that's going to work in you based on the Bible will give you power. I like power, y'all. Come on, somebody. The scripture tells us in Hebrew 4, in, in, in verse 12, it says, For the word of God, come on, is active, meaning alive and active. Jesus in you is alive and active. He's interceding. He left his word for us to do what it says. Because this is the power of the resurrection. It's the word. He says, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and moral. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Wow. So as I begin to dig in this more, and this is probably one of my favorite passages. This is one of the passages that converted me to Christianity. This one right here. What are you saying, Pastor Rod? <laughs> Romans 10 didn't do it. No, Romans 10 didn't do it for me. It was this one right here. See, here's the reason why this was it, because <sighs> here we go, y'all. I just got to be, I just got to tell you how I got converted to this one. There were things that I was doing in secret and nobody knew. And there's no way you could have known because you wasn't there and you did not participate. There were things that I did in the dark. Wasn't nobody there. So I'm saying I'm a good person. I, 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 I help people. I give to people. And, you know, I, I try my best, to, you know, to be on my best behavior. I'm, you know, I'm respectful of my, of my elders. I'm a good person. 
God knows my heart. Like, I don't have to be at church on Wednesday nights. I don't have to go on Sundays. You know, I don't have to even sign up to be a member because he, he loves me. John 3.16. So that was my doctrine statement of salvation. But I remember when the guy read this to me, he said, look, man, do you not know that God judges the thoughts and the attitudes of your heart? I said, oh, my God. What does that mean? Even the stuff that you thought you hid, the things that you, you, you thought that you got away with, even the stuff that you don't say out loud, the thoughts that go through my mind like a ticker tape, he judges that? Absolutely. Shoot, I need to get some things in order. So how does this work? He says, well, let's just go back and understand. He says, okay, let's think about it from a metaphorical standpoint. If you take a double-edged sword, it's meant to cut you twice. Because on both sides, it's sharp. Going in and coming out. So, so in order to get your thoughts different, because your thoughts <laughs> will sometimes dictate your attitude. Okay? Yeah, it's not your attitude that dictates your thoughts. It's your thoughts first. And so, 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 in order to get my, <laughs> I used to call it stinking thinking. In order to get that to smell better, what would help me? He says, well, the word would cut that stuff out of you if you begin to apply it. He said, Jesus can cut this out of you, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I said, what, what can it cut out of me? Your sinful nature. Your sinful patterns. Your, 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 your everything that, you know, God judges me, you know, God, God loves me. I could do it on my own terms. The word can cut that out of you. You no longer will work on your own terms. I said, how so? He said, because if the, you read the next, he said, it penetrates. It penetrates. I said, wow, it penetrates. He says, when you allow the word into your life, it begins to do things different. And then your soul and spirit can nothing, can nothing get away from the word. Your soul is, is, at, your soul is at risk and your spirit. But if you accept the word, something happens. And 1 Peter 1, 23 says it like this. This is a great passage. It says, for you have been born again, not of perishable seeds, but, in, but of imperishable. Though the living through the, though the living and the enduring of the word, through the living and enduring of the word. So if I take this in me, right, this, this is, this is. This is something that can germinate and be great. It can grow. My thinking be different. Because if the word going to pierce you, it's, it's going to puncture something in you. I like that. I need that because my thoughts and my attitude need needs some help, y'all. I don't know about you all. I don't know. But I'm just saying I needed some help. And I needed something that was going to convince me to stay in the word. Now, I, I'm telling you all, like, like. I'm the type of person, either I'm in or I'm out. The word, which is Jesus, converted me. Now, if he can convert me to change these thoughts of mine that dictate my attitude, and my attitude had a lot to do with my viewpoints. Where things, okay, she's doing it, he's doing it. Okay, we can all do it then. So, so, so my attitude also had everything to do with my conviction. Now, conviction doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be righteous. Whatever you got conviction to do, you do it. And I had to see that. I had to see my attitudes also affect the way I was feeling. A lot of my feelings then equals truth. And most times they don't. Right? And so you go into this thing, you go into this thing, and it all, it all lands on your heart. God, I need change. 
No, I, I don't need to just be getting up for holidays. Yeah, yeah, what's the next big holiday that comes up? And then we all foul into the church. No, I need a lifestyle heart change. I need a heart plant, implant. This heart I got, I need a new heart. That's the power of the resurrection. It gives you a new heart. See, in doing the word of God is Jesus. And this capacity we have to be secretive, it don't work. It just doesn't work. It's working not in your behalf. It's working against you. But your feelings say it works for you. But the word begins to cut. And it exposes. It talks. That's what Jesus does. My Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians 4, 5, the New Living Translation, for he will bring our darkest secret into light and will reveal our private motives. My God, thank you, resurrection. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you that this is this is how, you know, you know, you allow yourself to be a champion. Because anything that Satan can hold over you, he can use against you. One thing I found out that he can never use against you is the word of God. Why is that? Because you have the inerrant word of God right here. He can't take it from you. You can, you can read it all you want. And, and when we take the word and begin to apply it in our lives, it helps us to have a good and successful, prosperous lifestyle. In fact, the Bible says in Joshua 1, 8 says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. well, why do you think that's even necessary? Because I, I just got to believe if the word ain't on your lips, something else on your lips. <laughs> come on, somebody. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, ain't nobody exempt from cussing and fussing and fighting. Come on now. Ain't nobody exempt talking about I hate you. I wish I'd never seen you. I wish you'd never been around you. Ain't nobody exempt for saying some things that will break people down. Then we wonder, where did that come from? It came from because you did not meditate on it day or night. It came from because we decide we don't have enough time. The Bible says so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Now at, at, now, at this time, at this point, Joshua, the book of Joshua helped me to walk into this calling as a pastor. Yeah, what are you saying, pastor? I said, I'm saying, when God called me, I was afraid because I didn't know what to do, how to do. Why did he call me to do it? Yeah. I didn't have biblical training from Moody Bible Institute or Trinity. I didn't have my MDiv. So why are you calling me to do this? Because I'm God. And there's none like me. I'm God. Yeah. So, so what he had to do was encourage me by the word to give me what I needed to go forward. And, and, and I'm telling you, this whole scenario was Joshua. How can a man like Joshua fulfill a leader's role like Moses? He, he, he was a great understudy, but now he was called to take the people and help them to cross over. Come on, somebody. And I, and I can see the story lived out in my life, but today I can. But back then I couldn't understand it, but I had enough understanding to know that. Just, Rob, listen, man. Do this here. Be strong and courageous. When the word of God is applied in your life, you may not know it. You become strong and courageous. It happens. 
it's, it, it's almost like you grafted into it. It's, it's, it happens organically. It happens like a demo switch. All of a sudden, you got wisdom beyond your years. Come on, some. Come on, y'all. And, and in that, I began to get more and more in tune with the voice of the word of God. People ask me all the time, how did Jesus talk to you? By the word. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I can hear him. He's just as loud in my brain, man. If you open up the word of God, he'll give it to you. That's the resurrection power. So don't get discouraged because, you know, you don't have a lot of time to read. Be encouraged that you can read it day by day. Moment by moment, you can speak, pick your time to read it because I want you to think about this. What comes off your lips when you get discouraged? What comes from your lips when you be disappointed? What comes from your lips when you're driving and somebody cuts you off? What comes from your lips when you can see trash all over your community? What comes from your lips when you're driving all of a sudden, oof, you smell like a skunk. And all of a sudden, you know it's weed. Come on, somebody. What, what comes off your lips then? What comes off your lips when you're watching TV and you're seeing stuff that's happened? What comes from your lips? We have to think about, we have to really think about what we're saying. And if we really want to make sure that you're saying the things that are appropriate, it comes from the word. Right? It begins to work on us. Today I was driving and and um, I was coming down Central, coming off the expressway, and sure enough, I, I'm in I'm 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 by Harrison the bus depot, and I'm going north. I'm in my lane, and um, there was a turning lane, so I guess a person was going to turn, turn left. Not only they got into the turning lane, they cut the turn lane. They went right back in my lane and shot on out. I'm like, really? That's what we're doing now? We're using the left lane to get to the right again. Instead of go to just wait your turn. I'm like, Jesus, flying. I don't know if y'all seen that, but that just blew me away. I'm just like, God, please help them. Be with them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, let me just say this. Called me about 10 years ago. You son of you see what I'm saying? There's something else has been in my thoughts. It may not necessarily can't translate that out of my lips, but I would have been thinking, I'd have cussed them out in my head. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't no cussers no way. Y'all, y'all saints. I'm talking to y'all right here. Y'all, I'm looking at y'all, right? But we're not exempt from having a ticket tape judgment thoughts through our head throughout the day. Let the resurrection power of the word do some changing. Point number two, the second benefit of Christ's resurrection power, we become powerful witnesses. Come on, somebody. My God, you become a powerful witness. The Bible says in Acts 1.8, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Oh, my God. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. My God. The resurrection power was talking to the disciples. Says, don't y'all leave. Go, go, go there and wait. I got some for you. And that same power, man, that they was connected to, we're connected to today because the Holy Spirit is in us. And the, and the real cool thing about the Holy Spirit, it can't operate without Jesus laying the platform of the resurrection. It happened exactly how God wanted it to happen. I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to leave you a counselor, a comforter, the spirit. I got to go now, but I'm going to leave you something that's going to allow you to have the power but you, you got to wait. You got to wait. You got to do exactly what I tell you. And that power, brothers and sisters, of the Holy Spirit, it only says what he's told to say. Hey, Amen. 
He only do what he's told to do. And, and, and what I found out, this Holy Spirit power would develop Christ-like character. The character that's going to allow you to live through the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. I mean, that power, just imagine when we tap into that power and allow that power to initiate when you are sad, then guess what? He could give you the joy of the Lord. When, 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 when you are not in peace, he can give you peace that surpasses understanding. And when it's, when it's time for you to go through your trials, because you're going to go through the trials, consider the pure joy when facing long suffering. Listen, man, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, God be my witness. The power is unreal. It's because of the resurrection. I have the power. You have the power. And the power will speak. And it will speak gentle. And it will, it will it'll lead you down the road so you can activate the power. Y'all remember one of the twin powers activating. Them twins hit that power, hit their hand. Boom, they got power. You got that Holy Ghost power. That's working with you. Yeah, that same power when it's time for you to have surgery. Mm -hmm. When everybody else telling you not to do it. The same power when you're going underneath that needle. Yeah, anesthesia. Yeah, I had to trust God for all of that. And let me just say this. Once you go on anesthesia, you don't know where you're going. No way. Come <laughs> on, somebody. All I know, somebody was waking me up. Holy Ghost power allowed me to rise again. The resurrection. And that same power, watch this. As I woke up, he woke me up. That same power had me running my mouth, talking to the people right there in, in, in the recovery room about the message I had preached just the day before. Not even knowing I was talking about Jesus. Come on, somebody. The same power that said he shouldn't be opening up his mouth right now. The same power that gave me a, I needed something to eat. They gave me a graham cracker and a banana. They said he should not be eating. He just had this surgery. I'm just saying, you got to take even the bad news that you get and you walk in the resurrection power. The power to be gentle when you know you want to be harsh. Because they'd have rubbed you all the wrong way. But see, I'm telling you, it's time out for that stuff. When you are in this power, you can walk through with a gentle spirit. That's how you become a real witness. People watching what you say and how you handle your business. Come on, somebody. They watch how you run your life, your household. They watch how you, you love your husband or not, love your wife or not, your kids or not. Are they trained? Are you spending time talking about God to them? They're watching everything. You are the best witness for the world to see. Come on, somebody, without even opening up your mouth. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Witnessing. And brothers and sisters, there's another witness. Get ready for May the 3rd. We're going to go out there and open up your mouth on the corners of Central and Madison. And we're going to tell people about the resurrection power. Yeah. Yes. This morning I was cleaning off my porch and scrubbing it off and all that stuff, getting that winter dirt off of it. And uh, I got a really cool block. And one of the blocks, one of my neighbor's, they are also a pastor, and um, so I'm, I'm just doing my thing. You know, I, I, I got power, y'all. I can, I can work a little bit, you know what I mean? I'm, you know what I mean? I'm out there doing this. My legs getting strong. They're getting stronger. They're getting stronger, y'all. My wife said, don't do too much. I can do this right now. I feel good, you know what I mean? Because I couldn't do it at first. I heard somebody say, Rev. I look at who's talking to me. He said, hey, Rev, how you doing, man? I said, I'm doing good. He said, uh... I was just thinking about you. I said, oh, yeah? He said, man, you ain't preaching no more in the basement? <laughs> I 
I said, man, I, man, I, it's been a long time since I done preached in the basement, man, right? He said, man, that was something else. He said, she said, what y'all doing now? I said, well, man, I'm getting, I'm gearing up for May the 3rd, man. We're going to be out on the streets. Man, can I come? Man, I, I, I got, I got resources. Yeah, you can come. Why not? I said, get you a red shirt or a red jersey. How much it costs? Just go to the store and buy you one, you know. He said, I'm out there, pastor. I said, man, that's power. He want to go witness. Are y'all ready to witness? Who watching? Get ready. We're going to witness. And last but not least, this resurrection benefit of the power of Jesus, we can ask in his name <laughs> and receive in his name. When God had gave me that little piece right there, I thought to myself, now I can preach this thing here, boy. You can ask in his name, but you, you but here's the kicker though, Miss Stanley. You receive in his name. So now what happens is you got to watch for what you ask for, <laughs> right? See, here's what the Bible says in John 16, 23, 24. And the day you would no longer ask me anything because he's going. He's on his way, y'all. He's on his way. Very truly, I tell you, my father would give you whatever you ask in my name. My God, thank you. In my name? He's clearly telling disciples, like, in my name. Uh, it says, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. You know what they asked? <laughs> Save us! When they were <laughs> they were about to drown. Save us! But what, what, when are you going to ask something in his name? He says, ask you receive and your joy will be complete. Hmm. So I began to think about that passage and I was thinking to myself, I said, well, somebody told me this maybe 20 years ago, that they told me that if you serve the kingdom, the kingdom will serve you back. If you have intentions on asking, what you ask to share with the kingdom? Would you allow the things that you're asking to be kingdom worthy? Would, 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 would you be open to you asking God for something? Would you give it back to the kingdom? Would you allow that? Would you use? Would that be useful for the kingdom? That brother told me if you learn that early on. You will see favor ain't fair, but it's fabulous. In other words, my house is a kingdom house. That's why I have kingdom parties at my house and I invite the whole church to my house. I had one of my pastor buddies say, man, why are you like the, all the people in your church come to your house? It's a kingdom house. It's for the church. Come on now. What I have is for the kingdom because he gave it to me and I should give it back to the kingdom as the kingdom served me. And guess what? You cannot outgive the kingdom. Come on now. So if you're asking for stuff, you wonder why it has not come to fruition. Won't you just check out what you're asking for first? Would you willing, are you willing to give it? Yeah. You know, I got this brother. <laughs> I just tell you, man, this brother, he... Several brothers, but this particular brother, Brother Donald, he serves me in my home. He says, Pastor, I'm serving the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Hey, man, let me give you this, Pastor. I offend him when I want to give him something. But if I call somebody else, you know, it, 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 you know, from the you know yellow book, now you don't have to use yellow book. You just call, you just dial Hey, Google, you going to pay for their service? Hey, Donald, let me pay you. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. And my wife told me, she says, Rob, won't you listen to him? <laughs> okay. I got down on speed now. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But, but, but. The, the whole heart of the, 
the reason why I said that is when you serve the kingdom, you're not lacking nothing. That don't mean you don't want stuff, but you're not lacking what you need. Amen. Huh? Take this principle. Just, just try it. Just try it. Just, just I give it back to the kingdom. It's for the kingdom. So, brothers and sisters, listen, as we wrap this up and I begin to close, I, I want us to think about these, these, three, these three points because we can very well forget about the resurrection power until next year. This is the resurrection power right here that speaks. It's inerrant. It's perfect. If you want the power of Jesus in your life to be seen, you have to apply it. If you want the power of Jesus to be spoken of, you have to speak of it. If you want the power of Jesus to be favored in your life, you have to act in his name. And that next, what do you do? You receive in his name. Amen. Jesus was a giver. He, didn't, he did not take stuff and did not give. He gave it to the point that his life was on a cross. I hope that this has been helpful to understand that you are truly declared justified. Because what he's done and what he's continued to do and how much more that we can have if we just open it up and do it ourselves. You know, that's why he say, Elder Reggie, you can do even greater things than I. <laughs> These are the keys to do it. That's something, man. That, that is something. And, 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 you know, here's how all of us as parents, I'm sure you feel this way or you have said this, you would like your children to be better than you. Amen. To achieve things that you did not achieve. Mm -hmm. That's all Jesus said to us. We can do it. He wants the best for us. Those of you who are watching right now, if you know somebody who who are not saved, that, that, they're not justified right now. There, there is something that they can do that can get justified, but this, it, it, it happens this way, and in the word of God, you, they can be good people. They can good people, they can have good hearts and all that other stuff, but if they have not declared and decreed Jesus as their Lord and Savior of their life, they will never be declared justified. Come on. The Bible says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Tell him that. Come on, please tell him that. I'm going to tell the world this. Rock Church is going to tell the world. We're going to be out on the streets together. We're going to tell people the truth. We're going to love them. We're not going to offend them. We're not going to sugarcoat it. But we're going to unveil what the mystery that was given to us. And you just tell them it's for with your heart that you believe. And now you are justified that you believe. You believe what? You believe that Jesus died on the cross. He was buried and on the third day he rose with all power. You believe that. Come on, somebody. The Bible says it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and you're saved. Come on, pray with me. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I want to thank you for understanding what you have done for me on the cross. I want to thank you to know that I can be justified. I could be made right just by speaking the very words that Jesus, you died on the cross for me, and I believe it. You were buried on the third day. You were buried, and on the third day, you rose with all power, and I believe it. With that, I give my life to you, in Jesus' name, amen. Ain't that cool? Amen. So what I want you to do, I want you to continue to be encouraged. I want you to go and dial this number 773-887-3267. I want you to leave your contact because I want to talk to you. It's important that we continue to grow together. And I want to invite all of you all out who are watching. You don't have a church home. I want you to come out to 5628 West Washington at 1030 on a Sunday morning. We open our doors at 10 o'clock. Come on in and worship with us. This is a place that we want to help people to thrive. 
under the power of Jesus Christ. We know that he lives. Brothers and sisters, as I want to make an appeal to you tonight, I want to make an appeal if you will be so kind to come alongside and plant a seed, give a gift tonight, tomorrow, the next day, as we build ourselves up to prepare ourselves to be out on the streets. We're going to have food out there. We're going to minister out there. And we're going to make sure the people understand before they, before they get a meal, they're going to get that word. Amen. We're going to help them. But we need your help to come alongside, to partner with us. Go to rockofoursalvation.com. I want you to hit the donate button. I want you to consider, man, I, if I don't live in Chicago, but I can partner with Chicago, your resources can partner with us. And I want you to do that. And I want to thank you for what you have been doing. We praise God that it takes a village to raise children. Yes, we are the village of God, and you are too. My brothers and sisters, I want to thank you all for continuing to come on and begin to allow the word to change your life. Thank you for the support and prayers. Come on now, join us on Sunday mornings. Watch what the Lord wants to do in and through your life. Go ahead and be a witness. Go ahead and trust him with your life. Ask him for what you need that you'll give it back to the kingdom. Don't you hold it for yourself and watch what happens. Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for our time together. Thank you for a tremendous worship time. We are champions. May we live to worship you, God, because you are good. Let your power fall upon us all. As we leave this place, but not your presence, be ever so. Mm, mm, mm. God, oh, we give you praise. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. I'm Pastor Robert Lewis Stevenson. You are now dismissed. Good night. Praise God. Thank Amen. you so much.